Hello and welcome to the gallery. This week we are converting a Chaos Knight. So I got this Knight Castellan here, and we are going to bash him up in this week's video into a Knight Tyrant and make something interesting and chaosy out of him. Let's just jump straight into it. And here we have the actual box of the Beastly Bastard, and we are gonna turn him into something a lot more fun, because even though Knights are cool and all, Chaos Knights are even a little bit more cool. Well, that's my uh, humble opinion, but uh, it is known as a fact that I am, of course, correct. Uh, we have these bits, I've assembled everything, we don't need to watch that, you can find videos on all these different various bits. I've changed out the face mask for a Chaos uh, helmet that I had from a previous night. But now we have to do something about him, because I'm not saying he looks boring, but he looks a little bit, well, shiny and lack a luster, for lack of a better word. So we're gonna figure something out interesting with him, and let's start out with the base. Now, I have one knight, he's just standing on a base with a little bit on it, but we need something more interesting. So I have this really old rhino, and I'm destroying the damn thing. I'm using pliers, clippers, fingers, whatever I can find, because we want it really, really ruined. And even though it's got a thick coat of paint from some previous paint job, that doesn't really matter. We're gonna dirty it up a hell of a lot when we when it comes down to painting it. So we're just gluing it, super gluing it, whatever glue, whatever fits, just so it'll stick there. And then we're gonna take old rhino bits from here and there and just gonna add it around so it looks like it's completely ruined. The reason for the big hole is because I'm gonna stick the leg of the knight through it so he's looking like he's stomping the damn thing to the ground. And that'll be a cool look, I'm hoping. By all means, tell me what you think once it's finished, because it's gonna look horrible until it's all coming together. Super gluing that a little bit, finding various bits, mainly now finding something that look cool around so it looks like a ruined thing, and adding bit inside that damn hole so it looks like it can stand there. And also, so it will stand there, because this is not maybe a heavy model, because it's all plastic and hollow, but it's not light, and you don't want it to accidentally break and fall off, or something like that. Now, as you can see, one leg is inside the hole, but the other one is quite high, so we have to build something underneath that. So I'm just taking old bark and uh, a little bit of uh, cork and various things, and just building something there for him to stand on, to make the base not the center of attention, but this model cost a hell of a lot, so let's give it all it got, let's make something interesting there, M make something beautiful in huge quotation marks, because we want something looking somewhat dirty, somewhat real, somewhat disturbing, because we're going for a gunned out knight tyrant here, so he has to look menacing, and everything has to imbibe that energy of menace. So, a little bit of rock, we'll paint that up probably to look like rock, maybe various bits of rock, because the cork and the bark look somewhat different. I'm using this texture paint that I bought at a local hobby store, and this is a big tub, cheaper than the regular uh, GW texture paints, and it's a hell of a lot, and it's perfect for these big bases because you can really go heavy-handed, and I'm putting it on the base, on the cork, a little bit on the bark, and also on the actual rhino to give that also a weathered, disturbed look, so this will look like a rusty bit or a ruined bit, and the metal will show, and it'll be a little bit more grimy and dirty, and, well, interesting. That's the name of the game, this is a big thing, so we have to spend a little time to get an interesting look. Now, I wasn't happy with the pose at this point because of the little nubbin that's coming from the hips. He was looking a little bit leaning back. So, simple solution, cut a bit off. I mean, 
you would, wouldn't you? I mean, there's no reason for it because we're going to superglue it quite a lot. Well, not superglue, plastic glue it quite a lot. So it will be quite fascinating. This would be great if I was magnetizing it or something like that. But I'm not changing out the weapons on him. I'm not doing that much. That's going to be reason for magnetization. So I just nipped it off and then I'll glue him in a more interesting pose on top of this. Now that we've built the body and did something fun with the base, let's start adding some gribblies and making something interesting out of the outer shell and adding some stuff to the weaponry. Now that we got the rough look going, we got the profile going, let's add a little bit of fun bits to it. I have these uh, teeth things, Halloween teeth. We're not going to use them, but I had them on hand if I wanted them. Various bits from terrain, from a chaos rhino, some chaos warriors, banners, a little bit of chain, and this and that that I found around about the place. Something from the Harad Muma kill, the Lord of the Rings game, something from somewhere that I found, looks interesting, something from Demon Princess, various bits. And we're just going to add it here and there, get something interesting going. First going to see how the plates are actually looking on him. We're not going to glue them, we'll do that after the painting. But we're going to add the banners, the big banners to his shoulder bits, uh, well to his uh, forearm bits and to his leg plates. And we're going to add some interesting things also around those maybe chains something to give it a little bit of chaos -y, spiky things these hat things that came with a chaos rhino let's add that to the upper leg bits and that'll stick out of the little hole on the actual lower leg bits and that'll look pretty damn cool i hope now the thing that goes near the middle of the body the crotch guard we're gonna add the demon prince bit from the same location to it and of course one skeleton because why not i mean that's chaosy isn't it bones skulls i've seen it on the basis so let's have it there as well and now we're gonna add some chain this is just very fine jewelry chain that i bought at some store put down a little bit of super glow super glue and then i'm gonna spray the super glue quick hardener thing on it so I can work more malleably with the chain and add it where I want. And we're going to have chains over most of the armor plates, fastening things, hiding mistakes. It's a very good point. I also add a fair bit of super glue to the actual chain so it will stick. Now I'm adding a little bit of plastic glue underneath the chains because we're going to hang the, some skulls because like I said, bones and skulls, that's very chaosy. We're going to hang some skulls from the chain. And this is 40k, not Age of Sigmar, so a little bit of Tyranid skulls, whatever fat catches your boat, everything is fancy. And the chest piece, we it looks a little bit bland, a little bit straightforward. So we're going to take this bit from uh, Chaos Rhino and just glue that at an angle because then it will look like it's dangling from it to that. And that's pretty much it. A little bit of more chains and spikes and hooks and stuff like that also from a Chaos Rhino. I'm using a lot of the Rhino bits because I have one Rhino that I have converted into a more ZG Thousand Suns type Rhino. If you want to see a video of that, comment that down below. And also more chains because why the hell not? More chains are always fun. And for this kind of guy, because I'm not adding that much or maybe printing out, 3D printing something new for the armor plates. I'm just adding on top of the armor plates. And chains are a good thing to get a little bit of extra look to it. But if you're only using them, then it just looks like a chain demon or something like that. So adding here and there, just some little flavory bits and then a little bit of chains just to tie it all together. So everything looks somewhat cohesive. Not a bad idea in my opinion. And these spikes from something, probably the damn rhino, file a little bit off and stick them in between there. And we get some extra spikes with skulls and some tau helmets and what have you. And of course, a little bit of chain. Can you say chain with me? Chain. Very nice thing. And just wrap it around because maybe it's falling apart and needs a little bit of help. I, I don't know. It's a, it's a very old war machine and a little bit iffy at best. Now we're out of the super glue and back into the plastic glue. Taking these spiky bits from a Chaos Rhino, bending that a little bit and sticking it on there just to get some quick and easy spikes over there instead of the handlebars. 
the handlebars are great when you're probably going into these types of war machines, but this guy that's driving this thing, he likes to live things vicariously, so he has spikes instead of handlebars. That sounds perfectly normal. And this little thing here, don't kill me because I didn't take the paint off it, it wasn't that thick of a paint. And that looks like a pretty good start, but it needs something more, a little bit more bones and skulls and I might even add a few chains or a hell of a lot of chains that's actually more likely than not so we have this one skeleton here we'll wrap him up a little bit later on mummify him in a little bit of chain and then on these little places here this is a empty spot on the profile of the miniature so some demon prince wingy parts for the ones that don't have wings because why would you have wings on your demon prince except they look awesome with them so we're just sticking those on either side and that'll add to the look and as you can see i've added a fair few chains this is just the same way as i did it through all the miniature just super gluing one bit finding where i'm gonna put the next bit super glue that bit and then meandering it about adding some super glue to the actual chain so it'll be more firm and stay put in most cases, it can dangle a little bit, and that's fine. And here we have all the bits. A few that we didn't change at all, and a fair few that we added quite a lot of stuff to. And I think it'll look good when it's all coming together. And it's some dangling chains, some skulls, some bones, some spikes. Nothing too fantastic or difficult, just some simple little fun. And the main skeleton staying basically the way it was. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, social media and various tidbits. You do with it what you will, like, share and subscribe and let the colors flow. But until next time, farewell.